now instead of the culture impacting the wealth the wealth comes back and impacts the culture so it's like wealth and culture are two people and they're giving each other a big hug they're in this great relationship with each other where the wealth says i love you and the culture says no i love you too and the wealth says no i love you more and the culture says i love you too and it becomes a feedback loop do you follow what i'm saying it becomes a feedback loop and the feedback loop is this here's what's going to happen uh blackwealthmasterplan.com write that down somebody type that in the chat so everybody can get it because sometimes people miss the urls and i and i I say it two or three times, but some after the third time, I, I'm not going to say it anymore. So just type in the chat so everybody can see it. So you go to blackwealthmasterplan.com. Here's what happens. You do something basic like the $5 a day investing plan. You're just chugging along, do, 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 buying stock. You know, you don't know a lot about investing. You're just buying because you're you're shifting to a wealth builder's culture. You let go of the BET culture. You let go of the sexy red culture. You let go of this goof goofball culture that they're feeding you, and you're built. You have a culture of wealth building and wealth preservation. So then, what happens is after twenty or thirty years, now you're sitting on some money. Now you're sitting on two, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. You've got wealth. You've got money now. So what happens then now is now you have to change things. You can't you can't be a wealthy family and live a ghetto culture. You know, no disrespect to anybody who's born in the ghetto. I was born in the project, so I'm as ghetto as they come, but I don't want to be ghetto for life. So don't don't think I'm making fun of anybody uh, who is who either lives in, in, in the ghetto or was born in the ghetto. I'm just saying I don't want you to stay in the ghetto. So I hope that that's okay. I hope I can say that without being accused of being elitist. I'm not being elitist. I'm just saying I don't want to embrace and and to and I, I'm not trying to make love to the the negative parts of your life or the trauma. Sometimes we we hug the trauma. We like the trauma. We keep it close because we feel like that's a part of being black. There's nothing about being black that's connected to the pain that you're going through. Being black should mean that you're happy, prosperous, successful, and connected. So anyway, with that being said, once you have this wealth, once you've got this money, and you're you're doing better than everybody else, you're doing better than most black people you know, you're doing better than most white people you know, well, then at that point, it changes things. You can't really, you're not, it... How can I? A person who's got a million dollars in assets doesn't have to send their child off to go work a job that's going to pay them $1,000 a week to just pay their bills. They don't have to do that anymore. Cause you've got, you cause you're, you, you're making, you can make that amount of money from your investments. So, so you don't have to sell your time, your precious time on this earth just to make enough money to get by a family that has assets. Like you got some real estate, you got some stocks, you have some cash, you're, 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 you're doing fine. Money's not a thing. They, that family makes decisions with a different set of criteria than a family that has to think about money before they think about anything else. What's happened is that wealth, the building of wealth, naturally elevates you to a different frequency. Not that you're better than anybody else. That's not true. We know a lot of terrible people who are very wealthy, 